for metastatic breast cancer, we still have a lot of unmet need. Of course, our most important need is to prevent metastatic breast cancer. We need increasingly uh, curative regimens for the adjuvant and neoadjuvant uh, setting. But um, uh, in the meantime, until we have those data, there, there is progress being made in metastatic uh, disease. And we need to mobilize the, the immune system as much as we can in patients um, with metastatic disease and, um, and utilize anti-PD-1 or anti-PD-L1 agents. There's been some early promise in a small subset of patients with metastatic breast cancer, triple negative or ER positive. They're also being um, studied in the um, in HER2 positive patients, the pembrolizumab, the atezolizumab. Um, but we need to understand how to overcome more of the mesenchymal biology. Um, interesting, there's been a study done at Orivulin with pembrolizumab. You know, overcome mesenchymal biology, will the pembrolizumab work better, you know, for example? Um, maybe that's in part why the atezolizumab and the paclitaxel and nab paclitaxel look so good because it may be also overcoming some of that mesenchymal biology and then um, in increasing antigenicity, proliferation, and the, um, uh, and the immunotherapies may work, work better, the anti-PD-1, PD-L1 agents. So that's, that's promising. It's, it, it's not going to be as easy in metastatic breast cancer as it's been um, with some of the other cancers where it's been very, very obvious early, early on, such as, such as melanoma, for example. We're going to have to work a little bit harder, I think, to overcome some of this mesenchymal biology and to try to pr improve the efficacy of the um, immunotherapy uh, agents. Um, at ASCO, we will hear about um, an uh, anti-AKT uh, inhibitor that I think is very, very um, important. It's the GDC0068 uh, agent, uh, ipatacertib, that has been studied in a randomized phase two trial of paclitaxel with or without ipatacertib in metastatic breast cancer patients. So let's really hope, because the PI3 kinase inhibitors in that same scenario have not proven to be efficacious. So let's hope that the AKT inhibitors are, and we'll see whether it's you know, ER positive disease, triple negative disease. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. Um, the, we will be hearing as well about the PARP inhibitors coming out for patients that have germline mutations in BRCA1 or 2. Let's, let's really hope that these are positive trials because there are a number of other germline DNA repair deficiencies, the germline mutations that people inherit, that if the PARP inhibitors are beneficial for BRCA1 and 2 patients, that may help a, potentially a whole host of other, other patients uh, as well. And um, the, the luminal B breast cancers that are the genomically unstable, highly proliferative ER positive breast cancers, they are benefited by the CDK4-6 inhibitors, but we need triplet-based therapy there. We need to build rapid triplets. For example, adding PI3 kinase inhibitors on, such as alpelacib that's being done now. I'd like to see an anti-HER3 agent, um, such as MM121 from Merrimack be added in that context, because the, the HER family is probably very important there. Uh, perhaps the HDAC inhibitors may also be that it's being studied on its own. Perhaps a SARC inhibitor such as desatinib, which all of these agents have some single agent, uh, uh, sorry, combination activity in the metastatic setting. We need to build triplets, I think, to get more durable control of these aggressive ER positive uh, breast cancers. And um, in the HER2 positive uh, space, there are a uh, number of other agents that are anti-HER2 TKIs that can penetrate the brain, which is, for example, a very important um, site of recurrence in the metastatic setting. ONT380, tacatinib, is a, is a very potent anti-HER2 TKI that penetrates uh, the brain. Uh, abemacyclin is another very important CDK4-6 inhibitor that has excellent brain penetration, is being studied in combination with trastuzumab, as well as in patients with HER2-negative brain metastasis. There are a wide variety of um, 
agents being developed. But I, I like to sort of think mechanistically, what are the, the key mechanistic needs that we have? Where is the real lethal breast cancer? What's going on with those? And how can we prioritize the, the development of these agents? Right now, uh, we're enjoying a renaissance, really, of uh, clinical research in metastatic breast cancer ranging uh, a, a broad array of research topics uh, from exploiting defects in homologous recombination DNA repair defects in breast cancer with uh, you know, PARP inhibition, for example, exploiting uh, the immune system. Finally, uh, finally we understand the biology of T cells well enough to be able to you know, release checkpoints and exploit their true capabilities and we're seeing responses in the clinic, and that's led all, all, all the way to phase three trials that are ongoing in triple negative breast cancer, for example. In the steroid receptor positive uh, space, you know, the introduction of CDK4 and CDK6 inhibition has completely transformed the field. I mean, that's something that wasn't even on the radar um, a few short years ago, and now it's a standard of care uh, on a fast track. Um, in HER2 positive disease, there's a huge opportunity with a range of new approaches uh, from new small molecule tyrosine kinase inhibitors that are more selective for HER2 and, and have fewer off-target effects and consequently fewer side effects. They're also more soluble uh, in terms of blood-brain barrier access, though, so those molecules are very promising. Uh, we have new human-engineered HER2 antibodies that are more potent in eliciting immune responses than is trastuzumab. So that's really exciting. That's also in a phase three pivotal trial uh, with the aim to get FDA registration if successful. So that's very exciting. Uh, we can also augment immunity of antibodies by using agonist antibodies against CD137. And so those trials are in combination now with HER2 targeting agents and those look most promising. Um, so the future is really bright um, and it's across the spectrum of different subtypes of breast cancer now. It's not just restricted to one area. So for triple negative, ER positive and HER2 positive, there are very active research programs ongoing, many of which are now already in pivotal phase three trials and will get answers uh, in the next year or two. And hopefully that will transform the field and uh, then those molecules can be used hopefully in the early disease setting resulting in even better outcomes uh, in, that, in that setting as well.